Good morning, afternoon and evening my crazies. My name's Angela. I'm the crazy poppy lady and welcome back to today's book review. This one is for Icelandic mittens. 25 traditional patterns reimagined by and the name is on screen as I have no chance of pronouncing your name. I'm sorry to say. Right, so come on. And let's go and see what's inside this book. So uh, let's jump straight into this book and turn it over and see how much it's going to cost us. Okay, so, oh, USD. This is available in America. And it's uh, priced in at £31.95. Now, it's published by TrafalgarBooks.com. That's www.TrafalgarBooks.com. So let's crack open the book and we'll see what the patterns and everything else are like and let me sort out my camera as well right okay so it's Icelandic mittens now I saw the front cover of this and I just had to have a look because I love um, some of the traditional yarn work that's done in this and things like that and I was wondering uh, what sorts of uh, stitches and techniques are they using to get that okay so uh, this book is printed in China but it was first pub published in the United States of America in 2021 by of course Trafalgar Square books and they're from Ver Vermont now it was originally published in Iceland and there's some Icelandic words there Okay, so uh, let's have a quick look at these. Now these are the pattern, uh, um, the gloves and mittens, I believe, that are located in the book. Okay, so our table of contents is Introduction, A Brief History of Knitting in Iceland, The Textile Museum in Words on Screen, and Technical Information. Ah, uh, I've think I see a problem here crochet ground <laughs> okay but we'll keep going we've got yarn information bibliography and references and then acknowledgements so we'll scoot straight over and we'll have a look at some gorgeous imagery now uh, yes I believe I've made a big fat mistake with my with my book choice this week I think this is knitted everybody but to be honest there's still some beautiful patterns here that I'm sure if we went searching we might be able to find a mosaic variation especially of these snowflakes okay so we have the brief history of knitting in Iceland I'm going to skip through but there's a nana knitting or I'm not sure what they call nanas in in Iceland and then we have the textile museum um, and that dates, dates back to the 1970s when it was established Thank, thanks to the collaboration of a local women's association chapters in the region um, so that's what the museum there looks like sorry I'm not going to read the whole thing um, but it goes on about Icelandic war Um, and there's a section about a special area in the museum that was named after an, a lady. So, so there's a lots of information there about that museum. So if you ever go to Iceland and 
you uh, want to look that museum up and have a nose at what's in there that would be a really really interesting right and now we come on to our technical side of it now I can't tell you any more than what you can see on screen as I do not understand knitting patterns I can only do a basic knit stitch I cannot work in the round to make socks and I completely and utterly gave up on that idea <laughs> I've made one blanket using the same stitch over and over again it was really boring so I stuck cross stitch to it but um yeah that was over 21 years ago now right so there are the abbreviations so hopefully you guys can read it and you can if you're a knitter you can understand it and you'll know whether this book is for you or not right we've got some more information here there is a section on a different yarn types um, a diagnostic drawing oh I sounded posh there of a, a, um, a mitten explaining where the different parts are that they're going to be discussing within your pattern then we mo then moving on to the different methods so of course you've got your cast on your cuff your thumb thumb with gusset <laughs> palm a thumb with gusset side thumb with gusset gusset behind the thumb okay still flying all over my <laughs> over the top of my head all these terminologies we've got information on the body of the mitten the palm the back the top of the mitten making a gauge swatch oh gauge i know what that is and i don't do that either for crochet right <laughs> not for the most part anyway and then we go on to your needles you got double pointed circular uh, long circular flexible double pointed needles then how to hold your yarn how to do your yarn how to do the ribbon so this is a very intense book and full by the looks of it jam-packed full of information so do you know what and even a novice like me could pick this book up and give it a go I'm picking it up I'm showing you then I'm taking it back <laughs> I'm giving it a go <laughs> I don't need to get caught up with any other crafts at the moment thank you very much okay so the first set of gloves are these ones here and they're called bjork um the mittens are in the collection in the textile museum but it's not known who knitted them originally they're knitted in a brown and main color with a pale gray contrasting color for the pattern the popular eight petal rose pattern has been used in icelandic mittens for many years in numerous variations these mittens are an interesting example of a thumb gusset and thumb from the edge the pattern is easy to memorize and knit when I heard Bjork I started singing her tunes in my head <laughs> okay let's move on to the next one. Oh, let let's not show you that let's not show you that here we go whoa the, the funky <laughs> that's a good term here in the UK okay now these are the lara in the knitted pattern of these mittens you can clearly see the lines of feathers are drawn with knitted stitches the original mittens um are from the museum where they first they were first described in 1961 as originating from a, a district of i'll have to try and type the word on screen and are considered unusual for mittens of the east coast Headmistress uh, head taught her students at the, at the college how to knit these mittens. They're knitted with a greenish, a brown and white two-ply yarn. The cuff is knitted in a traditional weave like a lace pattern. The lace pattern continues up the body of the mitten in alternating light and dark rounds. The technique creates mittens that are both interesting and unusual yeah i can clearly say that again <laughs> i think those are really cute but again it's not something that i would make okay these look quite pretty and i'm sure i've seen a crocheted stitch that we could use to pull this idea off oh this is where i muck up on yet another name the era era um, these lace mittens were knitted in 1883 to 1966 and were donated to the Textile Museum in 1988. 
Knitting instructions for them have appeared before in a book of mittens by a particular author and they have always been very popular. The cuff and the back of the mittens are worked in small shell patterns. The palm is knitted in sock stitch and the thumb extends with the gusset from the side of the mittens. These mittens are enjoyable are an enjoyable project for experienced knitters who want to try a lace pattern. Now within here there is lots of writing on how to do it and charts and keys and other things which I can't really show you. <laughs> but here we go, let's move on to the next one. Hilda? I really don't know again. Um, these pattern mittens were knitted um, between 1930 and 2009 and were donated to the Textile Museum in 1980. Traditional are pattern elements from the West Fjords are very much irrelevant, um, evident here. A pale background and a colourful patterned hand at the top and bottom of the mitten. The ribbon on the cuff is broken up with colourful border stitches. From the, th the thumb are picked up after the body of the mitten is knitted. As with all standard knitting, the gauge is very important and these mittens are great to practice on. Hopefully you can read some of the extra wording that is um, on the page that I've, I'm, of course, am skipping. Okay, this next one is Valor. Um, these standard mittens are knitted in brown and white wool. The brown cuff is knitted in twisted knit stitches, knitted through the back loop. The mitten pattern consists of white vertical lines with zigzagging pattern between them. Twisted north knitting is also incorporated in the body knitting. Stitches are increased after the cuff for the thumb and a gusset is also added. Again, they are really pretty and quite striking. Uh, drifter or Drifter. Um, again, I'm, I'm sorry for any dodgy pronunciation. I've never attempted this language before. Um, a beautiful pair of mittens. It's not known how old these mittens are, nor who knitted them. But the pattern is very similar to mittens found in, in a particular book published in 1928. By the Icelandic Handcrafts Association, and the main colour is white, and the contrast colour is light brown. The cuff is unusual in that it incorporates standard knitting in both stocking stitch and ribbon. Various patterns are knitted into the body and the thumb. Attention needs to be paid to the variety vari to the tension for the knitting in one colour and two colours. A project for an experienced knitter. The Freeger. Um, a nice pair of minimalist knitted gloves. Um, they were made from the, by a student from the women's school. They were knitted in two colours, brown and white, and the cuff begins with a pico stitch and the edge is then turned under. The cuff is knitted in two colours forming vertical stripes on the backs of on the backs and the palms of the gloves are, are rows of two colour diamond patterns while the fingers and thumbs are knitted in one colour. These gloves are an easy example to try for a knitter who has already worked standard mittens. We had something very similar to that that we I'm sorry to say, could purchase here in the UK in the 90s, I think it was. I think I even had a pair. Came in all different colours. Absolutely gorgeous. Right, move on. The Acer. Um, these beautiful pattern mittens were given to the Textile Museum in 2000. Um, they were made somewhere between 1884 to 1969. Hand spun, fine wool and knitted them with a white main colour and a black contrast colour. The cuffs are in a main colour only and the thumbs are knitted with a gusset from the side of the mittens. On the back of the mittens is a leaf pattern and on the palm 
all over diamond pattern. Similar patterns have been seen with Norwegian knitting instructions and this particular leaf pattern was published in a book lit from Icelandic wool in 1944. These patterns demand, con demand concentration as the thumb has a gasset on the back as well as the front and the charts are not necess necess they're not easily memorised. <laughs> With uh, some patience, a, a beautiful result can be achieved. Oh, still the same one. There we go. Lower. An interesting example of mittens in uh, one of the traditional West Fjords a pattern style. They have colourful patterned bands at the top and the bottom. These are called leaf mittens and were made during one of the competitions. The patterns may be classic but the choice of colour is unusual. The main colour is an off-white and the contrast colours are red, black, pink and purple. They are cast on with purple, typically of mittens from the West Fjords. These have very short ribbed cuffs followed by strand pattern, stranded patterns. Be careful to keep the tension even whenever knitting with one colour or with two. It's nice that they're putting little warnings in for you. There's the Asalva. These mittens of unknown origin um, are knitted in a three ply natural colour, brown, white and grey. The body of each mitten is pattern, patterns of squares and diamonds, which is repeated on the thumb. These mittens have a rib cuff and an afterthought thumb. It is a fairly simple pattern is, and is perfect for practising a standard knitting. Oh, hello, cat. Okay, the Hala. These are multi-patterned mittens are from the Textile Museum and were knitted between 1866 and... 1960. Um, now these were donated by the descendants of the creator to the collection in 2014. These traditionally thoughtfully patterned mittens are knitted with an afterthought thumb. They are knitted with a fine hand spun two ply wool in a six natural wool colours. A similar pair was shown in a book published in 1981 by the Icelandic Handscraft Association. The origin, origin of the pattern is now unknown. These mittens are an exciting project for anyone feeling comfortable with complex two colour strand knitting. Few more to go yet gang, few more to go yet. There we go, giving you a quick look on that one. The groomer. These are mittens are unusual in that, uh, that they are knitted sideways according to the information from the Textile Museum. They were knitted by an unknown student of the Icelandic College of Education and the main colour is brown and the stri stri stripes are white. They are knitted in a garter stitch and sewn together on the thumb side. The thumb is knitted separately and sewn onto the mittens. Stitches are picked up and knit from the for the cuff, which is worked by worked in the round with white stripes. These mittens are simple knit, but a bit of time has to be spent finishing them. Enjoyable project for the knitter who wants to try a different kind of mitten. This next one is the better. Um, this was knitted somewhere between, somewhere in the 1900s, so that's 1900 to 1991. Um, these mittens, someone, this lady knitted them and gave them to the textile museum. They have a ho horizontal striped cuff and a vertical striped palm. The back and the thumb are patterned with leaves, eight petal roses and diamonds. The originals were knitted in a dark brown main colour and white contrasting colour. Play close attention to the dominant colour when knitting the stripes on the palm. Okay.
Latina. The West Fjords have their own unique mitten knitting tradition, which is said to date back to the later half of the 19th century. Here is a good example of it. The knitter is unknown. The wool is hand spun. It was uh, produced at Vaga in blah, 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 blah. So, no chance. If you, can, if you want to read it, scoot in a little bit on the video. A short ribbed cuff is followed by a border, a single colour on the body of the mitten and another border on the top. It is also traditional to a cast on with different contrasting colours and knitters in this re reason keep a stash of brightly covered leftover yarn left for this purpose. This is actually really interesting because you're getting a lot of historical information with each of these little patterns. I'm sorry I cannot read all the words that are in here. I'm trying, honest I am. The Salka. Um, these are very stylistically minimalist and elegant mittens. They are preserved in the textile museum. The knitter remains unknown but the mittens have seem to have been knitted for a very slender hand. They are knitted with two colours, natural black as the main colour and white as the contrast colour. The cuffs start with pearl rounds and then the rest of the mitten is knitted in stocking stitch. The thumb is picked up and knitted afterwards. The main pattern is easily me is an easily memorised one. All oh, two stitches I do know of. Only one I'm able to do. <laughs> yeah, let's move on. The harbour. These mittens um, are from 1962. Um, they moved into the museum in 2003. The mittens are knitted in a two-ply hand-spun wool. They show signs of it in excessive use and wear in, wear in places and are heavily adarned and mended. The cuff is worked with four rounds of ribbing followed by various uh, patterns with an afterthought for thumb. This is a decorative and multi-patterned mitten that is excite an exciting project for those new to standard knitting. I tell you what, if an item of mine was given to a museum and they said that um, it was heavily used and heavily repaired, I would be so happy because that also means it's heavily been loved by the recipient. Right. Um, uh, yeah, this one. <laughs> this one was made sometime between 1897 to 1990. Um, it was knitted with a delicate homespun wool. Sorry, the main colour is black with small patterns of white eight petal roses. The original mittens are tightly knitted with a small gauge. The pattern is simple, a variation on the very popular eight petal rose and are well suited for adding more colours. The instructions are not, not complicated, but some practice in strand knitting is useful before embarking on a pair of your own. Oh, look at that in a multicoloured yarn. <laughs> Sneak in a nice picture there. Okay, and let's move on. The Edda, or Eda. The influence of the Norwegian rose mittens is likely spread to Iceland at some point, but Icelandic misses also devised their own versions of the eight-petaled rose pattern in many different ways. Here is a pair by an unknown knitter with dark brown as the main colour and white used as the contrasting colour. White is used for stripes on the cuff as well as a band of pattern just above the cuff. The palm of the mittens is then patterned with vertical stripes and the back of the mittens with eight petal roses. The patterned thumbs are knitted with a gusset, a project for those who want to tackle the classic pattern and a thumb gusset. Uh, 
the Lajaya. Um, now this one is from between 1906 to 1993. Um, this is a simple but stylish mitten which was donated to the Textile Museum in 2002. They are knitted in black wool as the main colour with white contrasting wool for the stripes of the cuff and the dots in the main body of the mittens. They are relatively simple to knit but were chosen for this book because they are a great exercise in using a dominant colour in one stitch pattern sequence. There we go, there's a pair of them in the black and, black and white or at least a dark dark colour and white. The Bara. These are something quiet and ele something quiet and elegant about these mittens, which were originally entered into the museum compilation. Um, they were probably won or were awarded high marks by by the company. The knitter remains unknown. The original mittens were knitted in a light brown wool with dark brown and white used for the contrast colours. The cuffs are ribbed, and the thumb is a picked up and knitted later in the same pattern as the body of the mittens. This is an uncomplicated pattern that isn't a pleasure to knit. Akara. Very, very understand mittens. They are knitted in a light greyish blue wool which was hand spun and delicate. It's actually likely that these mittens were mostly machine knitted with only the dark blue pattern hand knitted. The a blue line for the patterning above the cuff and the eight petal rows on the back. They are different from other mittens in the book on a technical level and are suitable for experienced knitters. Does that mean you need a machine for them once? The pattern looks very similar to the rest, but as as far as it's laid out, but I can't tell you anything more than that. I don't knit and I don't do patterns. Right, so Saga. These mittens are knitted in a hand spun dark brown and white contrasting wool. The cuffs are knitted with one stitch in white and one in brown, alternately for one round, and then the pattern is shifted to the next round. This makes the cuff very dense. The original mittens show sign of wear and have been mended. The mitten body and the thumb are patterned throughout. It is important to keep an even tension and work the dominant colour consistently. There's a, a closer image of those ones. Another nose of that. Well, a scoot to Soli. These are beautiful gloves were knitted between 19 hundreds and 1991 um she worked the the lady worked with the initials pg and uh, let's jump on right these gloves are at least 50 years old these gloves are knitted with a black as the main color and white as the contrast color as always a challenge challenge to knit gloves especially when they are worked with Standard knitting, a project for an experienced knitter, and of course, you can knit your own initials into the project. Oh, I suppose you'd have to chart those as a guess. Knitters, if any of you are still watching, pop a comment in the comment section and down below. Oh, you don't have to, they've actually got the letters in the book for you, so you don't have to chart them, you just have to jump over to that chart. And now for Sana, these are classic neatly patterned mittens are preserved in the Textile Museum. Um, they were put into a competition. The knitter is unknown. The originals are knitted with a yellow contrasting colour on a black main colour. The combination is unusual for the museum's collection, which prominently consists of mittens made with undyed wool. The patterns pattern is reminiscent of machine knitted pullovers from the middle of the 20th century. This design is perfect for beginners. 
still not doing it <laughs> okay Arana. now this is also the last one in the book these mittens up for special occasions are originally knitted with a very fine silk yarn they're very different from the other um, mittens in the textile museum right these have been were from 1916 to 2014 they were knitted and donated the mittens to the connection. The thumb gusset is knitted on the side. The palms are stockinette stitch and the backs are a peacock stitch. The bottom hem is turned is a turned peacock edge. These mittens can be knitted in a variety of yarns. The peacock pattern is fun to knit for the experienced knitter. There are two yarn options for this milt, um, for these mittens, silk or mohair. Choose one type of yarn and use it throughout the pattern. Okay, all right. So as you can see, there's quite a bit there. Right now, we are on to the last section. Now this is a yarn information where it's talking about different ply weights. Um, then we have some more information about other yarns that they've discussed within the book. A bibliography. And a reference number for mittens in the textile museum. So if you do decide that you want to go and actually see these, this is where they are. And they're the museum numbers that you would be looking out for, for each of the mitt mittens that are in this book. And then and last of all, it's the acknowledgement page. Okay, so knitters. One, are you shocked to see this on my channel? <laughs> Two crocheters, have I tempted you to turn to the dark side? No, I don't know. I'm. It's definitely not one for me. Although I can really appreciate the amount of love, attention, and work that has gone into each of these um, sets of patterns, and of course the history behind each of them. I found that really, really interesting. I would love to hear what you think in the comments section down below. Would this end up on your bookshelf um, or is this one that you have to leave behind because you can't knit just like me <laughs> right that is it for me for today I hope you've enjoyed this book review and I will see you and next week fingers crossed it will be more crochet so uh, please remember stay chilled stay happy and keep crafting goodbye everybody